On this channel, the Steam Deck gets a lot of attention, but the deck would be just another handheld PC if it weren't for SteamOS, Valve's custom Linux build designed specifically for gaming. Well, on Friday, Valve released a preview of SteamOS 3.4 with a ton of incredible features. So let's go over what new goodness we've got going on here and what it will mean for gamers. First of all, there's a rebase of SteamOS on the latest version of Arch Linux. So this is gonna require a little bit of explanation. First, Valve hasn't built an entire operating system from scratch. They've built SteamOS on top of Arch Linux, which is a cutting edge Linux distro that's known for how customizable it is. So the original release of SteamOS was built on a version of Arch Linux that's relatively old at this point. And Valve's gone several SteamOS upgrades without rebasing on the latest Arch version, much to the chagrin of at least one of my writers. However, with this latest update, Valve has finally rebased to the latest build of Arch, which brings with it a ton of new features. To quote the SteamOS 3.4 release notes, this update pulls in the latest performance, security, and stability fixes for the underlying packages that are the foundation of SteamOS. Most notably, this includes recent changes to KDE Plasma, which is Steam Deck's desktop mode. Full notes on these updates can be found on KDE's website, but here are a few of the highlights. New overview view to see all open windows and virtual desktops. Updates to KRunner, the built-in assistant for searching and running tasks. New touchscreen gestures, new themes and wallpaper, and updates to widgets. Now one might speculate that Valve is rebasing SteamOS on the latest version of Arch in preparation for the release of the SteamOS ISO, the way that Valve intends people to install SteamOS on hardware other than the Steam Deck. But a new version of desktop mode isn't the only thing the latest version of SteamOS ships with. We have new performance profile options. There's a new option to toggle screen tearing. This is most of the time not desirable, but the fact that Valve's added this option here is great for folks who want to be able to run benchmarks and more. This is pretty cool. But they've also made a change to the performance HUD so that it uses a horizontal layout. It fits in the letterbox spaces for games running in 16 by nine aspect ratio. And this should obscure less of a game when playing it on the Steam Deck's inbuilt screen. But okay, I've got to ask, do you love the Steam Deck? And are you enjoying this video? Make sure that you like that smash button and smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the Steam Deck stuff we're doing here on the channel. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers and when we hit 100,000, I'm gonna be giving away a Steam Deck. So make sure that you get subscribed to stay up to date with that. And thanks. Now, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is very exciting. It's called Trim and it's been a glaring omission from Steam Deck. See, internal storage on Steam Deck is an SSD or a solid state drive. These devices have independent processes that free up data storage and allows it to write data in a way that minimizes wear and tear. But with storage, there's actually a software layer above the SSD called a file system. On Windows, you might've heard of FAT32, XFAT, or NTFS. On Linux, we use EXT4. When you delete a file on your computer, it really just updates the file system records to mark it as deleted. The problem is the underlying SSD isn't given that information and therefore can't perform the routine maintenance it needs or that it was designed to carry out. That's where Trim comes in, a Linux process which propagates the file system's information to the underlying storage hardware. This works with SSDs as well as many SD cards, and doing this can significantly improve a drive's lifespan and write performance, so it's great to see here. While Trim operations are run at scheduled intervals, Valve has also provided a new button to manually run a Trim operation in Settings, System, Advanced. And speaking of storage, they've actually added two other extremely useful features. First, external drives formatted as EXT4 are now automatically mounted and available for use in Steam. So hello to the JSOX M.2 drive dock. But they've also added an eject button that unmounts removable drives in settings storage. This won't physically eject the media, but it prepares it for removal. And it's great to see that it's finally arrived here. Next, Valve's been working on input. The DualShock 4 and DualSense trackpads, which emulate mouse input, are now disabled by default. They've also changed the on-screen keyboard's timing so that key presses on the virtual keyboard are now more compatible with games such as Street Fighter V and the new EA app. And they've re-enabled the built-in gamepad driver when Steam is not running in desktop mode. 
For audio, they've issued a handful of fixes. For example, the echo cancel sync device would stop working correctly in some instances. They've also fixed a case where some applications would output audio to the wrong device and also an issue where HDMI and DisplayPort audio would go to sleep after being idle on external displays. And then they had several general fixes. They fixed a performance issue where the adaptive backlight setting would cause games to hitch for 100 milliseconds. They resolved an issue where file managers wouldn't open correctly if GameScope had been restarted. They fixed an issue with sleep and wake for a number of games, fixed GPU clock settings not sticking in some cases, fixed excessive fan and temperature sensor polling, and they pushed new firmware for the official's docking station, which resolved issues with HDMI 2.0 displays not being detected during wake and boot. All in all, yet another incredible update for the Steam Deck. These new features are accessible by switching your Steam Deck's update channel. Navigate to Settings, System, Steam Update Channel, and then set the value to Preview. Now let the deck update and you can try all these things out for yourself. But I would love to know what you think. How is Valve doing? How are you feeling about the direction of SteamOS? Do you think this latest update signals Valve is getting ready to release a SteamOS ISO? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I'm able to continue bringing you awesome content just like this. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to support this show, you can become a Steam Deck Warrior with the links below. And thanks. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.